Hello, Hannah. I am home, as you can see, and it's lovely. And I'm getting my hair cut, which is good because this, this is absurd. And I am on spring break, which is lovely because I, it means I don't have work. And I went to uh, the Golden Gate Park today. Um, first we went to Dim Sum, which is the best food ever. And then we went to the park because we went to the De Young Museum to see the girl with the pearl earring. Uh, I almost said girl with the dragon tattoo. We were waiting in line. My boyfriend was like, so is this like girl with the dragon tattoo? And I was like, I'm pretty sure after you said that you're not allowed in an art museum. Uh, and then we also went to the Conservatory of Flowers um, because it was pretty. Oh my God, it was so pretty today. It was lovely. And I don't want to go to Chicago because Chicago is cold. And I like, I like Northern California, which is, should not be a shock to anyone. Your parents are currently visiting you, which is lovely. And, and last week stuff happened, which is why you did not make a video, but, but you should make one because I think you're pretty. You should have your parents in a video. Oh God. Um, my finals actually went well, which is absurd. I mean, like I thought they went okay, but then I got my grades and I was like, wait, what? In a good way, like all my grades were way better than I expected them to be. Well, almost all of them. And it was, I, I don't understand. So now my parents think I was just like exaggerating. They're like, Katie, like, you know, you did well. Like, I don't know what you're talking about that you were going to do badly. I'm like, no, but, but actually I easily could have done badly. Like it was the last test that changed my grade. Um, so go yay for not studying I feel like I feel like if this was a Disney Channel TV show I would have done badly and would have learned my lesson to study more but I did well speaking of TV guess where I just was LA home of TV and film um so my school had this program where they're trying to set up sort of an alumni network uh for various arts careers because my school very very recently has been like, oh, arts are a thing that people want to do. Uh, so they've been setting this up. And so they had us go to LA and talk with alum about the business and uh, meet a whole bunch of people. And they also, that way the, the very young alum, like people that just graduated in the area can also talk to the older ones. The idea being, you know, to help people out, get people connections, get them jobs. Um, and uh, it was actually because they want us to basically they wouldn't be able to set up this network through us. Uh, they paid for our trip. Like I just had to pay for the plane and that was it. Everything else was paid for, which was crazy um, and awesome. And I really, I'm glad I went. Like it was very interesting. Um, I talked to a lot of cool people. Um, I made some friends, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think Hollywood is the path for me. So I told my parents that and they were like, oh, so you don't want to be a screenwriter? And I was like, uh, no, I did not say that. I would love to write for television or even film. I don't, however, want to go through the process that is necessary to be a screenwriter. Mostly because the process is so unknown. Basically, everyone we talked to in LA wanted to do, you know, something. And they show up and they got a really, really crappy job. And this is not actors. Actors have their own war to fight. This is, you know, anyone else who, someone else who wants, you know, the production side of things. So they get this really bad job that pays almost nothing. And they, you know, average people had an 80 hour work week, basically. And it was, you know, allowed them to kind of meet people. And then, you know, they might get another crappy job and another crappy job, or they might happen to meet someone whose brother's sister's girlfriend needs someone to work on this movie, or they might not. And so, like, it's just, like, the most, literally, people get jobs because they know someone and because of pure dumb luck. Now, that is not to say that that's the only thing that matters. When they're on the jobs, they obviously have to work crazy hard and do well. Um, otherwise, you know, when those opportunities come up, they won't, no one will recommend them for the job or whatever. But, but it's not like you get promoted, or anything. I mean, promotions obviously exist, but it's not like, like if you were going to, going to go into business, I don't know a ton about it, but I, I, you know, you get hired at a company, I'm assuming, through like, yeah, connections are going to play a role, but not necessarily quite as big of a role. If you do really well in school and you have a good resume, one would assume you're going to get hired at a company. And then you slowly work your way up. And you might like change companies, but like, it seems like a pretty straightforward thing and it's not in Hollywood. Some people are like two years out and they already have like a job they really like. Some people are like 10 years out and they're still working crappy jobs. I mean, it's just absurd. And it's so much based on who you know and luck. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. The other thing about it that I didn't like was that we met a lot of people who sort of gave up 
their standards almost. So like we met this guy who is a writer on Family Guy or, or was. He now is doing his own show. Um, and he, you know, he used to be, he was always kind of into comedy writing. Um, and he realized he was into that. But he wanted to write like, it, we got the sense. He wanted to write slightly like higher class comedy. Like he ended up working, he worked on Go Golden Girls for a bit. Um, which, I, you know, that was mostly because that job was available. Sorry, my eye is killing me. Uh, and then he worked on Star Trek, um, like the TV show. And that was, he really wanted to work on that. And then he got hired at Family Guy. And he said, he said he had never thought of himself working on that kind of show with, with mean humor, you know, misogynistic humor, racist humor, that kind of stuff. But he was like, okay, well, it's a job. So he took it, did well, and continued to work there. And then finally got to the point where he actually created he left to create his own show it's like if you're like creating your own show you've, you've pretty much made it in the business like like you're you're good at this point you don't necessarily need to just take jobs because they are available you can somewhat pick and choose and if you're creating your own show you can obviously pick and choose what you make it as right not exactly uh the show he's making is called murder police and it's exactly like Family Guy. I mean, it's not... Okay, it's obviously... It's about policemen. It's not, like, the same plot as Family Guy or anything. It has creativity to it. But my point is that it's, like, the same kind of humor as Family Guy. Which, you know, should not be a spoiler, even though it hasn't come out yet. Because any ad to the show, you'll figure out what it's like. But it's just as misogynistic and racist. And I don't like that. And if this guy doesn't like that, then why is that what he's making? Well, it's probably because, like, Fox knows him as this guy who can write this stuff well. So that's basically what they trust him with. And it's just, ah, it's stupid. So many people we talked to, like, worked on crappy movies, but but knew they were crap. Like, you, you see all these movies coming out, like Battleship, for example, and you're like, oh God, like, why does Hollywood make this stuff? I mean, you know, there is a crowd that likes it, but to a great extent, many people get these are bad movies, right? So all this money is going into these bad movies. And you can't help but wonder, God, along the way, didn't anyone realize this was bad? And here's the thing, they're well aware that it's bad. I heard so many people be like, yeah, I worked on some really crappy movies at this point. Oh, and then I helped make some crappy music he movies here. And like this one guy, Mark Evans, who's the president of production at Paramount, was like, well, you know, with those kinds of movies, you just try to make, you know, you know you're gonna have to make those big blockbuster movies that some people, a lot of people think are bad, so you're just gonna have to try to make the best one possible. But it's like, you're still aware that you're working with the genre. Like, like clearly, that means you're still aware that you're working with the genre that like, isn't great and you're working with a script that isn't great um and like basically basically what he was saying was like yeah you have to make crappy movies but like try to make the best crappy movies but it's like why can't you just make a good movie but you can't because uh, it's a stupid system it's like certain things sell like big action flicks and so audience so the companies aren't willing to fund stuff that's different than the stuff they know sells so, like, the movie Juno, that was kind of different at the time it came out, right? And obviously it started, like, a smaller thing. But, you know, you would think movies would see, like, movie companies would see that and be like, oh, Juno did really well. I wonder if people like that kind of stuff. But, but they don't. Uh, they continue to produce this other stuff because it's too risky. You know, that, that was one movie, but they happen to know a lot of these movies do well. So, it's just like, ah, uh, no one's willing to take, I mean, no one's willing to take any risk and part of the problem is that they have these jobs where like they're trying to get any job possible because there's so many people down there and it's so hard to work and it's all basically unpaid slave labor um and so you know you're gonna take anything you get you're not gonna care the quality of the movie it is and this is why i have decided that the internet is the way to go which i already kind of suspected but i this has confirmed my decision the only people we talked to throughout that who seemed like who i really kind of liked who seemed pretty chill uh, was these people at Mass Animation, which is this new animation studio thing that d outsources animation, meaning they go to Facebook and they're like, hey, animate stuff. Like, you can animate this little clip and you can animate this little clip. And if the quality's up to par, like, we'll pay you money and you can put this all together so it like gets made faster and by all these people. It's really cool. Um, and they had this, like, little office. They were very casual people, like, very chill. It was, it was just very relaxed and I really liked it. And, uh... They, uh, they're making the show, um, called, oh god, it's something about mother in the title. Um, but basically it's like a family guy sh type show, you know, a cartoon adult humor show, except it's about, it's primary character is a woman. So it's about a mother. And so it's that same kind of, you know, mommy blogger 
very realistic and serious humor and you know but it's it's applied to this show so the show looks almost like it'd be this family guy misogynistic racist show but it's not it's not it's it's rather doing the humor on family guy that i actually think is funny like there's plenty of stuff of family guy that i think is funny it's just the stuff that's not mean towards people. So none of the big companies were going to pick this up. And they even got Eva, Eva Longoria to voice the main character. And apparently she's great. But still none of the companies were going to pick this up. So who eventually picked this up? Hulu. All the big companies said they weren't willing to take the risk of having one of those shows with a female main character. Because they didn't know if they'd be liked or not. And they'd end up getting watched. And it's like, ah, they just care so much about money. And not at all about making something like good. And yeah, to some extent, you have to care about money. Duh. It's the real world. We have to buy things and eat. But like, with the giant salaries in Hollywood for people that are like really up there, you know, there there comes a point where you're blatantly just putting money over quality of what you're making. I'm sorry, but there, there just does. So they claim they don't want to make these shows because they have no idea if anyone will like these shows. But they don't have no idea if anyone likes these shows because they've never made these shows. So it's stupid. <laughs> With the internet, you can see, you know, how many people search this term, how many people like mommy blogger sites, how many, like, is this a topic that's actually going to go somewhere? You can also use smaller budgets, um, and you can distribute directly to the people who, are, who will watch it. So there's a lot of advantages to it and reasons that it becomes sort of a more bit more creative field in the sense that it's it's more innovative stuff. Would a show like the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, which oh my god I hope you watch because it's so good and it just ended it and, and I'm so sad that it ended. But would a show like that ever be able to make it on TV? No. But did it make it really well? Like did it become really popular on the internet? Yup. Basically all of this is to say that I think the internet is a very cool medium for stuff to become popular because of its quality as opposed to stuff to become popular because studios think it should become popular. I'm sure I'm not articulating any of this very well, but this is what I think. And it's also the reason I'm seriously considering starting a web show. Um, but I have to figure out how to do that because I need a cast and I don't really know how to get people to trust me on like the front of, yeah, no, I actually know what I'm doing because I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, I have to go pick up dry cleaning and get my hair cut. Thank God, because these need to die. Um, but I love you and I hope you have having fun with your parents. Bye.